number one, and number two, we have control over who's admitted. Right. It's the the old Zoom we could record as well. The difference is with the web, webinar format, you have the participants and the attendees right. in separate rooms. That's the that's the difference. So that whoever's hosting doesn't see forty two people. Yep. You know. We always have that many in our utility meeting. Yep. All right. Well, um, actually, we do we have to choose a chair for the utilities? Correct. I think that's going to be so we're recording. Yes, so but the meeting hasn't been called to order. Right. So I'm going to let the current chair call the meeting to order. OK. So a welcome to the Utilities Committee meeting on February 16th. We're getting started um, by deciding on a chair for this next year. So I volunteer to do it again if no one's doing it. All right. <laughs> I move that Cindy be the chair of the Utility Committee. <clears throat> Seconded. All right. We're moving on then with the 2021 water quality report. All in favor say aye. Oh. Aye. <laughs> aye. aye. All right. Okay, so this is uh, Jackie. Yes, um, um, committee members, I uh, included in the packet the most recent edition of both the Port Orchard um, consumer confidence report, which is the official state name of it. It's water quality report, but it's officially consumer confidence report for both Port Orchard water system as well as McCormick Woods water system. So it's pretty much the same as last year. Really, the only things that I change on it, I look for some new water tips or get a new quote from somebody. But uh, really, this information is what's updated each year based on what happened in the previous years for our sampling program. Do you have any questions about anything in the reports? No, it looked pretty similar. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, 2020. Water Actually, I, I do have a little bit of a statement about that because okay. I took the customer service classes periodically for American Water Works Association. This is a section in there. So I have to have mine perfect because the state really looks at mine. So <laughs> because I teach how to do it. So, oh. That's one of your many hats. Yes. Okay. And uh, the 2020 water system plan update. Correct. And I think we've talked about this. I don't remember what level. I think we talked about it here last meeting when we adopted the 2020 water system plan update. And we talked a little bit about the fact that the uh, water system plan update that was approved by the Department of Health was a conditional approval where it it treated the, and, and for everybody's understanding, we have two water systems. We know that we are all the city of Port Orchard, but there are two separate ID numbers. And so we do have the original city, and then we have the McCormick that we purchased in 1999. So because of the issues around foster and data that was still being generated in that 580 zone, um, that information did not make it into the, this water system plan. So the water department of health basically approved the downtown system until 2029, correct Jackie? Uh, actually November 30th, almost the end of 2029. 11, 30, 20, 29. And then they conditionally approve the McCormick system until what, 11, 30, 2023? Correct. And so what we're doing is, so we've adopted that. Um, I'm sorry, Mark, excuse me a second. They also did a third portion of that conditional approval that approved the combined systems, should we get them combined, is only approved through that 2011, 30, 2023, um, because of the, of the issues with the McCormick information. Correct. So what we're doing is, right. So, so basically we, we really have 2023. So we're using our on-call 
and we're going to be amending this 2020 water system plan with that information that's now available so that we can get them both to 2029. Oh. So, so we talked about that, I think, when we adopted the water system plan. So you'll be seeing activity in the future that has to do with the water system plan update being amended. And don't get that confused with our general sewer plan. That it, That is an amendment or wait, no, this is- No, the, no, that's right. The sewer plan is an amendment and this stuff we have to do for the water system plan is an update. Right, so this, so the, sorry about that. So the, um, so this actual title, I'll change it. This was the water system plan amendment. No, no it's this, this thing that we're talking about right now, having to change that information is the update to the water right. system plan. Yes. Okay. We're talking specifically about the update to it. The problem is the Department of Health and Department of Ecology have different 180 degree where the water system plan is an amendment and you have to update it, or the sewer plan is an update that you amend. So they're, they're reversed. I don't know why they do that, but they do. So anyway, this, this, this item was talking about the recently adopted water system plan that we will need to update. Um, they do that for job security for utility managers because public works directors don't get it. Okay, well. I, <laughs> this is as clear as mud, you guys. <laughs> that's good to know. The bottom line is, is we've just. Oh, no, it's an amendment. No, it's an update. What? <laughs> you bet. This, really this important. <laughs> an update. I think the important yeah. thing is we've got to change the water system plan. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We're going to have to change it after just getting it done after a year. So that's what we're trying oh. to do is that we're very frustrated that it took so long to get done. And now we're immediately having to turn right around and change it. So thank you, Council Member Clausen. Um, well, the goal would be to change it so that we can get it approved all the way up to 2029. Yes. Correct. Correct. Is that going to require a lot of effort on your part, all of you? It's We're hiring Murray Smith, who's now our on-call water and sewer consultant uh -huh. to do that work. Yeah, it, they'll be doing the work and the calculations. It's a matter of um, gathering data for them and then managing and reviewing the their output to you do the have, submission. Yeah, we have to, it's a little bit of a check and cross check calibration of the model. <clears throat> so so that, that activity is, You'll, you'll start seeing some, whether they're contracts coming forward and that activity kicking off here fairly soon. Okay, the Outstanding Performance Wastewater Treatment Plant Award. I'll let Jackie, everybody know, we get this pretty much every year, so. Um, hey, Mark. Yeah. What, do you have any kind of a time frame on how long this update's gonna take? Uh, we're, we already have scope and budget. I think we just have to get them, get them under contract or have they already been issued their task order, Jackie? Because we're doing this. No, no, they have not been issued the task order yet. Um, and in answer to your question, I believe that we will have this completed by the end of this year. Yeah, we want to get it in this year, if not as soon as possible it's a, it's a priority for us to get it completed. yeah great then we'll have six years of smooth traveling right yep uh, right <laughs> uh, like all right so the outstanding uh performance wastewater treatment plant award is something that we get every year and this is a photo um showing off the award it's and actually, hard. I think they're holding last year's as well. So I see. Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell. A little small. Yeah. yeah. I think we. I think we've. I think we've got. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've received this pretty much every year since I've been here. I don't know. Well, that's wonderful news if we're getting a performance award every year. So. Yeah, I don't think it's been pretty hit or miss. I think the, the plant's been doing a very good job of providing compliance. So, so anyway, we have received again for 2020, we did receive, you know, that award. So 
they're doing a good job even with Randy going, you know, leaving the plant and then Marty Grayville coming in. Mm -hmm. so they, they've not, they've not, you know, lost a step. And then council member Canary, if you, so have you been to a SAC meeting yet? Um, in, about uh, a, in about an hour, right? Yeah, just about an hour, Mark. Oh, okay. That's right. SAC is tonight. So you'll, the, if you've not toured the plant, um, it's, they always offer tours to obviously council members and whoever wants to. So that's a good opportunity if you've not been through the plant, just to kind of understand the basics of, you know, the head works, the, the treatment systems, the clarifiers and the discharge is kind of really what happens there. So that's available to you. So it's great. We usually tour the plant while eating cookies. Yes. Well, that's the other thing. SAC always <laughs> provides cookies. It used to provide cookies at all their meetings. And of course, we never do. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of fun. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's an initiation to be able to take your cookies with you while you're you're going over by the uh, the screening room and the waste treatment area. <laughs> yeah, well, I heard the committee chair was responsible for bringing the the cookies. Is that correct? No, somebody else is. Jay did it last time. I guess that you filled his shoes, so it must be you now. Yeah, we haven't what, met. What, what the piece of advice that I would give to you: don't drink the bottled water that they offer you. No. <laughs> <laughs> From experience, huh? <laughs> uh, just first-hand knowledge. There you go. <laughs> They're really pushing their tertiary treatment program. So yes. Um, okay, so uh, we digress. Uh, yes. Okay, so the DW SRF Well Eleven design update. Um, so Jackie, you can update those two items, and then the award. I'll let you. Uh, do both of those since you well here's the here's the official roster of awards uh we were awarded eight billion and the uh, other eighty thousand on there is uh, is the ten percent fee um so they have fund that as well uh this is our overall but uh, um funding strategy as part of our funding strategy how we're uh, financing all of the um, updates and improvements that need to be made in the water system. So next year we'll be going after um, the well 13 uh, money, money, right? Mark, is that what's next year? Yes. Yeah, so at this point, well 11, between the pre-designed money that we got, the 500,000 we're currently using, and now this 8 million, the engineers are telling us that's enough to get that well 11 online with pumping treatment or pumping and treatment uh, establishment. It's, we don't need the treatment yet, but it's gonna be designed so that we can plug and play treatment in the future. Because at some point, iron manganese is going to be a, have a maximum contaminant level or an MCL requirement. So we have treatment, ATAC treatment at well nine currently, because that, that well has always had iron manganese issues. Well, 13 and well, 11 currently don't, they have iron manganese, but not at a, a problematic level. But we're designing both well 13 and well 11 such that the room will be designed with blind flanges and, and you know, so that we're not having to tear into walls or floors or anything. It's going to be set up for X number of uh, ATAC tanks. And if you want to see what those look like, you can have Tony or somebody take you down to well nine, which is over at Van Z Park. So we're being forward thinking in that we don't need it yet, but if at some point in the future, we can just literally plug and play these ATEC treatment systems in. But so, we, so we're getting the sewer in because the ATEC systems, the, the, the treatment has a, a, a backwash system. So we're doing everything and getting that in place so that, um, we can get well 11 online and working. And then at some point in the future, if we need to plug in treatment, we can plug in treatment. So the good news is we've got that funding through DWSRF realistically because they gave us the $500,000 for the pre-construction. And we're gonna be doing the same strategy for well 13. Department of Health already has 6 million invested in the well 13 project. And we're feeling very comfortable based on conversations with the Department of Health that they will 
we will be successful in next year's DWSRF Drinking Water State Revolving Fund. That's where they get grant money that comes in and then they redistribute it uh, as low interest loans. So uh, fingers crossed that we'll get well 13 uh, funded next year so we can then get that one off the list. And okay. as far as the schedule goes, um, it, you can see here that we plan on being going to bid in quarter one of 23. Good. Ideally, Jackie, we're going to actually ask Murray Smith that we actually advertise in Q4 of 2022 simply because if we can advertise in Q4 of 2022, uh, we get out in front of everybody else that's advertising for 2023 work. And you're not waiting for contractors to get their docket filled. So you get you typically get better results if you kind of advertise for the next work in the last quarter of the year. Um, okay, so the ARPA funding, I think the mayor talked about that last night at the finance committee. Um, we're basically committing the 2.8 million that's coming in two chunks, 1.4 we have now and another 1.4 that's coming later. Uh, we've committed that to the Marina pump station because that project here recently has gone from a 13 million to a $15 million project. Uh, thankfully we have that, well, there's a couple of thankfullys. One is we originally only had 4.1 million in a loan that we were able to parlay that into a $13 million loan when the project started to grow and grow and grow. And now to have this ARPA money in a grant just to get this major infrastructure project done um, without completely uh, disintegrating our sewer fund reserves is, you know, we're very lucky to be in this position in my opinion even though I know that there was some frustration that we weren't able to move ahead with the, the 390-580 intertype water project that the ARPA money was originally gonna to go to, but this is the wise thing to do. So, you know, we've gotta get some of these, we've got so many capital projects going right now that anything that we can do to just start knocking some of these off is really important. Mark, I've forgotten, when, is the, when are we hoping to have the marina pump station done by? We're hoping to start construction here this fall, and it's right. it's going to be about a year worth of construction. We will we will definitely be the first new facility down in that part of town, mm -hmm. and followed probably mm -hmm. by bank building, maybe Kitsap Bank's new building, mm -hmm. then the CEC, and then if we get the funding, the Bay Street improvements. I think those are kind of how the dominoes will fall. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That's going to be so good to have that one taken yes. care of. Yeah. Um, Foster, that's Jackie Brown. Yes, and I do have an update on that. Um, something that happened actually since the meeting. Let me pull this up here real quick. Uh, there we go. So I received, oh, I'm not sharing. I <laughs> guess I should share it with you. Otherwise, you won't see it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I received this email from Tom Pores, who is our uh, water rights attorney. Um, and he we've been asking to see Yelm has actually submitted their mitigation plan. Um, Yelm, um, Mark, you may not be aware of this, but Yelm is the, is the municipality that actually caused the foster decision to happen. So what they did was took what they had originally done and modified it to meet the new legislation called the foster pilot project. And then have where it, so they've been the first foster um, water system to submit. And so we reached out to them to say, hey, you know, what, how are you doing? Let's look, can, can we look at your plan? And this is the email that came back from their water rights attorney, Mr. Brogan. 
And it's got some really good information in it. It says that um, they've been coordinating with Squaxin and Nisqually over there, and we have to coordinate with Squaxin and um, the Suquamish. So it says we do not anticipate opposition as there's been a positive relationship. And uh, it's, it's basically really good news as far as, as we're concerned. And not only that, but our plan is to kind of emulate what they did here because you know, this is this is new science, making new making new science. So um, so really good news, and especially that the Squaxin are are supportive, or at least not in opposition. Um, the Suquamish, we don't know yet. The word for we've gotten from them so far is they do not support um, NEB, which is net ecological benefit. They want water for water, which is not feasible, and that's why the foster legislation happened. So. You know, hopefully they will see the the good in actually restoring some riparian areas rather than just dumping water into like Blackjack Creek. I mean, that's it, it, it's not going to do any good if it's not sustainable. So uh, I think to back up in the broad as a reminder for the committee, you know, the broad issue here is that you have aquifers that we're pumping water out of. Uh, there, there became an issue of, you know, inflow, stream inflow, where aquifers were pumping to the point where streams weren't recharging and there were, was no inflow. And so mitigation started to happen and they called that in time, in kind. So for every drop of water that you pulled out of a well, you were supposed to basically dump it back onto the ground. And over time, it, it's, we basically, hydrogeologists have basically determined that's not really helping the streams at all. Yeah, um, if, Mark, if I could piggyback on that for just a second, excuse me. It's not every, just to clarify, it's not every drop of water that we pull out of a well. It's the amount of water that's calculated that we would be impacting the stream by pumping the well. Correct, yeah. And so, and so this NEB or net ecological benefit is a new a new process by which we're really looking at uh, being strategic on, you know, how are we really benefiting the stream inflow? There are different ways to do that through, you know, different types of mitigations and uh, what's the term, Jackie? Um, what, augmentation? Augmentation, I always forget that. So through different augmentation techniques as opposed to what the current strategy of just in time in kind ha has provided Unfortunately, fortunately, we're one of the five foster projects in the state um, that the legislature established through this joint legislative task force. Uh, the down, you know, the downside is that really water rights in general are at a standstill until this gets resolved, and the and, and the different tribes have a lot of influence on, you know, these waters and these approvals. So this has been a long process. Um, I think, how long have we been part of foster? Four years? Uh, yes, yes. We've been doing it for about four years now. So um, we're getting closer, but this is, this is critical for us to, for example, well 11, when we bring that online, we're only gonna be able to bring it online at half its capacity, pumping capacity. Once fosters then, we can be able to turn it up to twice the amount. Uh, well, 13, we can get it drilled and everything done, but we can't actually turn that on until this is resolved. And then well, 12, we can't even, uh, McCormick communities, basically, they've done, they've drilled the pilot hole, but they are not going to move forward with anything else until foster is resolved. And unfortunately, well, 12 is really the critical source that we need so that we can separate from the city of Wilmington. Up, up in the 580 zone. So there's a there is a lot riding on NEB in the joint legislative task force and foster being a success. So I think that's as easy is a very complicated uh, thing and um, I only understand maybe half of it and uh, that's probably the easiest way to explain it. Otherwise you start getting into hydrogeologist jargon or legal legalese, um, which I kind of, my eyes glaze over when when our hydrogeologist, Joe Becker starts talking to Tom Poor's our attorney. So, 
Okay. So when when are we expecting um, the Foster's situation to be resolved? Are we talking within a year? Well, we don't the, know. The most recent um, estimates that we have from the what we call our Foster team, um, the most recent is that we should have some reports of examination before the end of this year, hopefully in quarter three. Uh -huh. um, that will go to Department of Ecology and then it's out of our hands. We have no control over when ecology will make a decision. As I talked about, I'm sorry, Cindy, but I don't think you were at the last um, council meeting. I talked about it a little bit there um, or at a council meeting anyway, about the fact that the state um, is working on updating the municipal water law. The Department of Ecology is working on updating the municipal water law, but they're trying to do it through policy rather than actual rulemaking. And so we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed that they're not gonna hold up any decisions until they get through that process. Right, Ecology did say at one time that they thought they could potentially have this resolved in 2023. Then there was this kind of arbitrary, but it may be 2024. So it's really, one of the important things that happened and it happened very subtly and it almost didn't happen and the, the legislature in this last biennial budget almost didn't continue funding the joint legislative task force. I know. Um, that, that, would been, that would have been really bad. So anyway, I think that's enough on Foster unless you have more questions. Okay, nope. splash, splash pad. So on the splash pad, I guess, and again, for everybody's, to bring everybody up to speed, so the city had, we moved ahead at McCormick Village Park. We did that in three different phases. We did the logging originally. Then we did the phase one where we put in the restrooms and the parking and then and the storm drainage. And then the, the last phase, recent phase was, you know, all the toys and the splash pad and everything. When we were designing the splash pad, that was right when the city of Bremerton had to shut down their, uh, down by, by the ferry terminal, their, uh, Arbor Park, Arbor Park spray thing, and because of water quality issues. So the city was very intentional, Port Orchard saying, look, we don't want to go down that path. We're just going to, you know, put in a system that it just dumps the water in the ground. It's not going to be a big deal. Well, that was the decision that was made as we, you know, it was strategic. It wasn't just willy nilly. And we ended up putting in a very popular spray park. Unfortunately, we also put in a very popular spray park that at the same time, we started having the issues in the 580 where we were identifying the source issues and the storage issues. And so it was determined that we needed to retrofit this splash pad from just dumping it onto the ground to then recycling the water. So had the Bremerton Harbor Park not had their issues, we probably would have designed it the way we're moving right now. Uh, so we went down this path of just where McCormick communities had just built our 580 tank. They also just built, rebuilt McCormick Pump Station 1. We had hoped that we originally were going to have them do the retrofit to turn this from uh, being dumped onto the ground to have it recycled. Um, that ended up being a bit of a catastrophe in that the original design was designed by somebody that also built these systems and it was a very expensive system when we did a value engineering on it. So we put on the brakes, got through another year of summer and we're just now getting the plans ready to advertise, but we don't wanna advertise right now because we'll literally have this for the summer now, we'll have everything just shut down. So how we're gonna advertise this and we've confirmed with our water consumption because we're, we have a deal with Bremerton right now that we're buying water in the 580 in exchange for infrastructure. When we get done with this, they're gonna take over our 450, 450,000 gallon existing water reservoir to serve their half of the 580, their water retail service area and they're going to take the water main, the existing water main that goes from Anderson Hill all the way through McCormick down Old Clifton Road because McCormick Communities right now is building the new city of Port Orchard water main. So in exchange for that infrastructure, um, they're selling us water. 
we've confirmed that the needle isn't going to move this summer by operating this head like we did last year. I think it's from noon to six, seven days a week. Um, and, and how we're going to advertise this project is in two phases. Phase one is, is going to be for the contractor to be able to purchase and store and be paid for all materials on hand. That's these, because of the COVID issues, there's still difficulties getting certain electrical components, you know, everything from roofing to block to everything we're gonna, they're gonna be able to get all those purchased and, and paid for, but the actual work won't start until September of 2022. So that's how we're at this point, that's the best way to move through because I know I don't want to receive any more angry phone calls. And I know the mayor doesn't want to receive any angry phone calls from very angry parents that the splash pad isn't working. So I think we have a good strategy moving forward, uh, given all the curves that we've kind of been thrown. So that's really the update on the splash pad. Any questions? So I don't think we had, um the splash pad opened last year that many days, seven days a week, the noon to six. So that's an extended period of time that we're going to have it open this summer. Yeah. No, it was it was originally opened only on the weekends. And then the right. mayor came along and said, nope, seven days a week. And it was, I think, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mark. Was it? I think I thought Tony said noon, but anyway, we're gonna obviously we're gonna monitor it. And if we uh -huh. have to, if we have to ratchet it back, we also adjusted the the timer because the kids would just go on and just like, they'd just be running constantly. So we've made some adjustments and operations to help reduce the amount of water. And, you know, we may, it may be it's from, you know, noon to six on weekends and it might be less during the weekday. You know, we'll, I think we're still working those out but the important thing is that we're gonna manage the water consumption so that we can get through this last summer and then get this thing done. And you hope to get it done um, in, in the last quarter or so before yeah. winter. Yeah, it'll be done. It'll be done in 2022, early 2023. And so that it'll be up and running for 2023. Right. As a treatment system, as a yes. recycled, recycled water system. Right. Okay. okay. Um, the last item we have is the what we call the McCormick Water Campus update where the water campus in general includes the current 450,000 gallon reservoir that we have, the new 580 reservoir that we have, the future 660 reservoir that's uh, in design right now, and at the well 12, which is just a pilot hole right now, and then obviously the pumping and the treatment. So, um, <clears throat> so that's what we call the water campus. Um, the first item under the water campus update, it's associated with the water campus. So at McCormick Village Park, um, there we are. So I can't keep up with you, Mark. <laughs> so, well, I, I was, I was, I was just, you know, for everybody's benefit, um, just making sure that everybody catches up on what the what what when we're talking about the water campus, what it is, and so. The one of so everything north of Old Clifton Road is actually City of Bremerton retail water service area. So anybody that lives in McCormick North, McCormick Meadows, um, the McCormick Park, that water is actually coming from the City of Bremerton. They get a bill from the City of Bremerton, um, even though the water is blended currently from both the McCormick water system and the City of Bremerton. One of the issues that we're resolving as part of the splash pad, for example, is the water main that we tapped into, even though the, the water main in Old Clifton is actually ours right now, we tapped into that main and we ran it up for the restrooms and the fire hydrant for the park, but it was actually Bremerton's water retail service area. So it, it was a kind of a fop on our part. It was like, hey, this is our water, this is our water system. And then later it was like, hey, you guys got a meter in our retail water service area. So the easement that will be on the council agenda next week is basically over the very small part and scroll up just a little bit, Jackie, to the, to the not the legal, but the drawing. Yeah. What you're going to see is there are two easements that Bremerton are going to receive. One is out of our control, which is the 
Okay, write the next one down. Well, I stay on that one, stay on that one. So you can see that that larger parcel is the, is the, is the park property that we got from McCormick Land Company years ago. McCormick Land Company also gave South Kitsap Fire and Rescue property for a future fire station. And so when we started doing the park development, we were able to get an easement across the fire property for a shared access and then utility. So there's a blanket easement that's 90 feet wide over that South Kitsap Fire and Rescue parcel where the water main is. Where we come out of that property is that small easement area, that little cross hatch, and you can go to the next drawing down. The, the easement that the mayor will be signing next week, hopefully, is basically going to be providing the city of Birmingham with an easement across the city's property for that amount of water line that's on our property. Now, the, the city also prepared for the fire district a similar document that had the easement that was going from Old Clifton Road up to the easement we're providing. Um, they've been given that document and it's, and it's their decision whether to provide the city of Bremerton an easement or not. Uh, the good news for everybody is that water line is that there is an existing ingress, egress and utility easement already recorded where that water line is, is through. So um, we potentially could have just said, hey, that easement exists and it's fine, but we decided to go the more conservative approach, which we're putting an easement over an easement. Um, but again, that's up to the fire district and the city of Bremerton to resolve that. I just want to make sure that you understood and knew that our portion of this transference of that water main that's serving McCormick Park, the irrigation system, the restroom, and the splash pad is actually Bremerton water. And they have, they, we now buy water. The meter is our, their metered water to us rather than our water. So that's that item. Um, the new water main versus the existing, I briefly mentioned that earlier. Um, the, what Jackie's showing you there is if you go up to the old Clifton Road, that's the existing water main that I actually designed back in the early 90s um, when I worked at Olson Associates <coughs> for the 450 from the McCormick Water Campus. There's an- And that's right here is the water campus. That's what I was trying to get down to this map, Mark. This okay. is well, this is the 450 <clears throat> tank. This is the new um, 580, um, 1 million gallon reservoir. There'll be a third one up here um, that it will be the 660 along with a booster station. This is also the piece of property where well 12 is located. Correct. So at some point in the future, the city of Bremerton is going to own the 450 and the old Clifton water main. <clears throat> and where that little red dot is, is about where- Oh, oh shit. Darn it. <laughs> there's, an, there's an inner tie in that location. So the city of Bremerton pumps water from their Anderson well field up Anderson Hill. And then it comes down Old Clifton and it ties in there. So we have water from our McCormick well system <coughs> that connects and goes. McCormick Communities has just built this higgledy piggledy one that's going through what will be McCormick West. <clears throat> and so when that's done and complete and the 660 reservoir is done and complete and well 12 is, or well 12 is online, we will separate the systems completely other than Mark, there will probably be an emergency intertie only. Mark, would we do an intertie to connect the old city and the new city? Will that be going down Clifton or are we going to go down the backside down to Sydney? Uh, we have both. Both? Yeah, we've got the, the 58390 that we were using the ARPA money for at one point. That was what we called the old Clifton intertie to connect the 580 to the 390 down there by um, the Juvenile Center and the Port Orchard Industrial Park. So, how will we do we have to lay a separate line? 
next to this one that we're going to turn over to the city of Bremerton? No, we're going to, if I can uh, uh, respond to that, what we plan on doing is coming from the tank that's at the industrial park. On, right. um, okay. Coming from there up and tying into the western side of McCormick communities. It's there's it's only like a, a little a short little stint from Old Clifton through the woods through an easement. You know when you before you get to Anderson Hill, there's that fire access road. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> on the left side. We're yeah. gonna we're gonna tie in there to be able to um, loop the system. All right. In reality, remember those that agreement that we were talking about last night that McCormick was going to do certain improvements in the next five years. Right. That's coming in from the backside on, on, old, on, on Glenwood road. They're okay. likely going to get that constructed before we'll get to this one on this side, but eventually we want them on both sides to be able to circulate water. Right. right. So that's known as the, the Glenwood 395-80 coming in. Okay. Connecting well 13 down through Sedgwick, Sydney and up. So that's the Glenwood inner tie. And then, then we have the old Clifton inner tie and then we'll maintain the 260 with Bremerton as an emergency only, uh, the 260 zone inner tie that we've got. And then this current inner tie, that's a two way inner tie. It will become a one way inner tie so that we can still potentially pull water into the 580 from Bremerton on an emergency basis. The reservoir that we have over there on Geiger Road in Fatfold, Sedgwick, that connects into the city through fireweed in that area, right? Does it go under 16? It goes under 16 at Lowe's. Oh, it does go under 16? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and that was that water crossing went in when Lowe's went in. So the water mm -hmm. didn't get we do just FYI too, John. We do have an inner tie with West Sound at that tank. Yeah, yeah. But that tank is our tank and supports, in theory, our system. And that's just yeah, now it does support. Yeah. It supports it, and that's why we got that public works board money to put that three ninety booster, so that the development that was going to occur at uh, Bravo Terrace and all those apartments down on Sydney near Sedgwick, you know, that that booster is going to support that area. Hey, Mark? Mark, at, what, at what point do we have to decide about the fluoride treatment? Before we inner tie, before we turn an inner tie on, we have to decide because we can't push fluoridated water into that tank. Into the Bremerton system, right. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so once we get the inner ties, completed in the new main down Clift, Old Clifton, will we still be uh, having all the north side of Old Clifton being serviced by Bremerton water? Yeah, that, um, that retail, those retail service areas are set by the, the Kitsap County Coordinated Water System Plan, which has been in place since, oh my gosh, I was the first chair of that thing. I think it was back in 90, 90 or 91. And um, the, those are set unless you go through an official change process that has to be approved by both agencies and PUD, who is the keeper of the document, as well as county health. Yeah, it's a process. So, John, you had a question? Oh, you answered my question. Well, I, I guess maybe I do with the fluoridation issue. At some point, we're going to be turning over the one tank over to the city of Bremerton along with that main. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, is there an issue with cross connect or us fluoridating the water, or is it just now while we're sharing that tank and sharing that main that Bremerton has an issue with it? Uh, it's it's because because um, we fluoridate based on a council action, and they don't fluoridate based on a vote. So they're very concerned that they can't have any fluoridated water because it was um, a higher level of, um, of oversight than, than council action. So once we, um, when we are able, once we intertie these systems, we're gonna have to, if we wanna turn the intertie on, we're gonna have to separate so that we can't be pushing fluoridated water into that tank. Correct, we, so right so now- So emptying it? Will it have to be empty? No, no. Um, no, right now there's no fluoride in that water in that tank. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, McCormick, okay. yeah, McCormick doesn't yep. have fluoride, 
So right. as soon as we do the 58390, either of those two inner ties, suddenly McCormick is going to be fluoridated. Right. And that two-way inner tie that I talked about is that little red dot. Yep. That's going to have to be a one-way inner tie, or we're going to be pushing fluoride into Bremerton, which we can't do. Right. So it's it's a future conversation. It's a problem that the city of Bremerton needs to figure out to mm -hmm. put it. <laughs> well, if Bremerton did fly, it would be really easy for they're us. Not, they're not going to because- Well, oh, I know they're not going to and they've already had their vote, but the city of Bremerton's vote shouldn't be controlling what the city of Port Orchard does. <clears throat> yeah, we, we just have to be mindful of it. And I think everybody right. here right. is mindful. I agree. But, you know, Mark's point that becomes a one-way inner tie. We can get water from Bremerton for an emergency. They can't get water from us for an emergency because our water is fluoridated. Right. I understand that. Rob. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, get just F the other well they, they can't get water in an emergency. I'm sorry. I was just saying that once we get the additional wells in, we no longer need to buy water from Bremerton other than in an emergency. Yeah, well, and Bremerton <laughs> has to be really careful about their their sources as well, because just FYI, they can't get water from Silverdale or anywhere yeah. else either because of fluoride, so. Right. So yeah, right. how are they going to put, are they going to pump water up into that reservoir once we separate and we go our separate ways? Yes. Be, and just, water just, up in? Yeah, just as they are now, there's a pump station at Gorst. Um, down right by that by Anderson where Anderson Creek crosses the highway 16 that pump station is what serves that reservoir now jointly with our McCormick wells but they're also bringing another well on line 1r <coughs> the Sinclair Ridge development that's kind of come off this new roundabout <coughs> they're <coughs> they're running a McCormick communities how to upgrade that well so there's going to be two sources Anderson Wellfield and this 1R that's going to be feeding this tank. I mean, part of the rationale for that inner tie originally was that <laughs> we needed water to support the daily use of McCormick and they needed fire flow protection. So that's why it was a two way inner tie we could draw raw water on a regular basis and they would draw water from us if they had a major event so once they have that tank operation and being able to fund it now we're only talking about those rare emergencies whatever they may be a drought correct okay Okay, well 12 we talked about, it's on hold with Foster, it's a pilot hole right now. The good news is, at one point, we didn't think we were going to hit water. Um, the bad news is, kind of, we hit water, but that water aquifer actually goes all the way out and affects the Squaxin tribe. Uh, we didn't think we were going to be going that far out because it's a very deep aquifer. So it was kind of a good news, bad news, um, but it's... I'm leading on the good news side. Um, so that's well 12. And then the 580 reservoir is the one there. That's the, now the existing, the new, it's new, but it's existing, the million gallon. And then uh, they're also building the city's first elevated tank. Um, as opposed to at one point, there was gonna be a big booster up here um, and not have another tank. I think this is a much better design because we have a tank that's elevated to get the pressure we need, but we don't have dead storage that would be created for water quality purposes. So um, it's it's a good design. And then you can see with this layout that we, we also have the, the the pumping and the treatment and and everything on that water campus. Mark, when you say elevated, I, there you go. <clears throat> That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, it's going to be like not as, not as significant as when you go into George Washington and you see the big sign that says George, but it, it will be an, our first elevated tank. We have something similar 
up there off of Annie Sprinkle and Tracy and Morton, the it's a standpipe that that provides pressure. Um, but it, that's just kind of a big long cylinder. This is this is actually an elevated tank so that we get the pressure and the volume that we need at the elevation we need and not creating a bunch of dead storage um, that we don't Mark, want. We have that engineering marble at Par Paul Powers Park. Oh yeah, yeah, we do. The one that's offline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have those there. We used to have two of them up at uh, Sydney and, and uh, Kendall. There's a couple duplexes sitting now in the spot that was two big elevated tanks. Okay. Huh. Anyway, so we're we're going to go back to the elevated tank business, and <clears throat> T. Bailey, who built the last tank, is building this tank, and we're tucking the uh, what is it, the booster pump under the tank, under the footprint of the tank. Cool. Are we going to paint um, trees on the side of the tank, like Bunny Lake? Um, I don't. That's pretty it. expensive. Yeah, it's beautiful. Know. It blends in beautifully. Another thing I was wondering about: um, are, are we going to allow cell towers, uh, our cell providers, to put antennas on the top of our tanks, our elevated tanks? Currently, do. Good question. Because. Um, some of the proposals for these tall um, towers could be solved perhaps by renting out space on our tanks. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that that might happen someday. Um, I know that we receive FAA clearance just for this current height. Uh huh. Um, so whoever would propose that would have to go through that loop because of the proximity to the airport. Oh, sure. I saw um, crossing the country recently, I saw a lot of um, cell um, towers on tanks. It was interesting to see them. Many, we're many, open, many municipalities um, supplement their, their yes. water income doing that. I think yep. it wouldn't be a bad idea, right? We're open to it. This is whether yeah. they want to cite them on our, our tanks. We, we, you know, there was a bunch of federal regulations that came down related to the cell industry that, that uh, removed a lot of our authority. We, I we see. Okay. Um, are you almost done, Mark? I'm just, I have another question I want to squeeze in really yeah, fast. Yeah, we're, we're, we're done with the agenda. Okay. Well, I have two items to add, but go ahead, Cindy. Well, I'm just wondering about the work that's being done on Kitsap. Tree um, removal, and I see the um, some markings on the pavement. Can you tell me what's going on there? Can. So the, the, the trees were buckling the road and the sidewalk and we're removing them and replacing them. There's a few of them that we're able to save, but most of them were lifting the sidewalk panels significantly. And I think so we've got about 22 new trees coming um, for between there and the section of Sydney where we did had the, um, um, the sinkhole. We mm -hmm. lost several of those trees and the remaining trees are hawthorns. Um, and they aren't probably the right tree to have there. So we're, we're gonna remove those trees and, and uh, plant new trees um, where we remove trees from. And, I, and, I, and I, I know that I had requested, and I hope it's happening, that we're putting in the root barriers that we used on Tremont, which is that kind of black. Oh yeah. Black yeah. material mm -hmm. that we were gonna uh, put the root barriers in. Um, what was your second question? Well, uh, now that uh, you're talking about putting the trees in, are we going to vary the species so that we don't have all one species and have- It's going to um, be the, um, a flowering plum. A flowering plum? Mm -hmm. Or mixed the with flowers. Color? The Blurriana. Yeah. We, okay. we, we need to be careful. We, no. <laughs> they, uh, they research this extensively as far as what- species that won't lift sidewalk panels and get won't grow we have utility lines we don't want them they can't grow too fast or vertical to get up into the utility lines PSC has requirements so um it's it took many more months than i wanted it to to, to arrive on the tree that that uh, that uh, we're purchasing 
some cities um, actually stagger the trees because of um, disease and pests um, so that you don't lose a whole section of trees if you have issues. Just, just letting you know that can be a problem. Okay. Um, were those your two questions? Yep. Okay, Jackie, what did you hear? Okay, well, two things have come up since I distributed the agenda. First off, um, we're working on getting the interviews set up for the new utilities compliance specialist, and HR has asked if anybody from this, um, any council members from this committee wants to be on that interview team. When is that going to be? Um, I think they put it for, Mar was it March 25th, Mark? Uh, let me look. Uh, it's next week, March 1st. March 1st. Okay. I'm a month next, off. Next Tuesday. Or two Tuesdays. Two Tuesdays, yeah. I'm sorry. I should have had that date. So March 1st, and it's 11 to 2.30. So it's basically... So I would assume that the utility chair would attend if, if possible. I cannot, unfortunately. March 1st, 11 to 2.30. Yeah. And we don't have to have a member. Just, I know I'll, be there for, I'll be there for as much of it as I can. I do have another meeting in between. I can cut that one short a little bit. OK. Um, well, that would be, just to let you know, that would be an observational um, attendance then instead of um, What's it on? Is it Zoom? Um, I, I, we can do, we can have them set it up as Zoom. The problem is, is that you wouldn't be able to vote on or provide scoring on the candidates, Cindy, if you're not at all the interviews. Correct. Okay. If you, if you, if you can't make it work, we can just, we just want to offer it to the, to the committee members. We can do it with staff. We just usually like to have one legislative representative. It's not mandatory. Well, it sounded like it was an observational position anyways. Is that correct? It? No, it's in the past. No. I mean, Cindy's served on and we've I have. I've been I've gone to a number of them. Okay. If you can't attend all of the interviews, then it would be just simply for observation. Right. Because you could score. Them. Correct. Okay. Just let us know. So Sorry. yeah, just let me know so that I can uh, let Elizabeth know how to set it up. Okay. Okay. And it is going to be Zoom, right? Well, no, we can do it that way. It normally wouldn't be because it's 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 very hard to really get a feel for somebody when you're interviewing them over Zoom. Okay. But, we have, but we have over the last two years interviewed over Zoom. Yeah, we, yeah, we're, we've done we're, both we're back interviewing in person, Mark. Okay. 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 And then the second thing you so have- So the city call then. Is, with the second thing is just to let um, council know in case you get um, questions about it or anything, and that is that we're going to have to be doing an industrial user survey, which has to be done every, I think it's five years, uh, according to our NPDES permit at the plant. So we're working with West Sound to put that industrial user survey out there. But that's, that's only for water users that produce more than 25,000 gallons per day, correct? Uh, I, I haven't looked at the parameters. It's it's for the NPDES permit at, at Squirf at the plant. Yeah, I think I think the first step is that we have to identify any user. Of, uh, it's for, we don't we don't measure waste flow. We just we can only do it based on water consumed. Right. So we're going to be looking at anybody that is twenty five thousand gallons per day or more that then gets included in this survey. Yes. So, Are there very many of those? I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did one. Out. We did one four or five years ago. 2018. 2018 was the last one. So um, we only got the cover letter. Not, I know Thomas Hunter had prepared that one. So um, yeah, we have some, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, it is now 6.01, do we wanna, there, is there more, do we wanna call the, call the, the show? So you have on the agenda that the next meeting is April 12th, meaning there's none in March? Well, if we did a March when it would have been um, March 8th, which is only two weeks away, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sounds we'll, good. Yeah, we'll just go to the 12th. Yep, okay. all right.
Sounds good. Then this meeting is adjourned and we'll see you in the next.